Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Art Whisper 88. You could say this is a collage episode. I have started to arrange some collage elements as a first layer in this uh, project. And so I'm going to go ahead and mount these. And as you can see, I have a template in front of the piece as, as a guide to where the borders are. So I, I uh, use this template a lot, especially when I line up the um, when I'm lining up the edges of my registration bars because ever so often they shift and with the help of this template I can determine the right place where the bar should go. So it has many uses. So anyway, while I am mounting these, I will take the opportunity to let everyone know that I am partially deaf. And there is a reason why I speak slowly. Well, first of all, I speak slowly, so my explanations can be understood. That's the first reason. The second reason is many of my viewers are non-English speakers and they rely on captions. So by speaking slowly, it will be easier to follow and uh, I have received some comments also that uh, once in a while my breathing sounds can be heard. And since I am partially deaf, I don't hear that. So I apologize if it is bothersome to s some people. Um, but I am going to continue my slower pace of speaking. That's what I am accustomed to. And I hope you viewers will understand my situation. Now these are parts of my warm-up exercises. And I am using Mod Podge, but it is watered down. I would say 30% of it is water. It's fairly watery so that the, the water content penetrates the fibers of the paper and allows it in turn to be mounted on my uh, my substrate which, whichever I choose at the moment this is Somerset Velvet OK. 
Okay. Now, lastly, I will. This is an actual fabric a piece of black lace which I use occasionally because it has a, an interesting texture. Okay, so that takes care of the collage elements. And I will go ahead and allow this to dry and then move on to the next step. Okay, now what I want to do is pick up these leftover dried spots and I'm going to use a transparent gold. You see these are the spots where the paint dried too fast and I want to uh, compensate by adding this gold here but only certain areas. So here is the print with the second layer of yellow. Let's see what happens. Okay. Yeah, the gold just fills in the blank spots. Okay. It's very subtle, but 
when I move the paper back and forth, you can see the uh, shimmer of the metallic gold. Pretty cool. Okay, so I may opt for a third layer and see what happens. So I'll be right back. Okay. While the second layer is drying, I went through my reusable stencils. They're tried and tested. They seem to be working every time. So I like them. So I'm going to use this one of my favorite colors it's copper made by Amsterdam and hopefully this copper will give some snap to this image so I'm combining copper with let me see, I'm looking for a, a vermilion. This is what I was looking for. Just a spot of color. So. So I have two zones of color. One is copper and one is bright vermilion. Okay, so here is the print with the second layer. I'm going to proceed to a third layer. I hope my registration doesn't fail me.
Now this time, since I'm hoping this will be the last layer, I will leave it on for five, five more minutes. Okay, I got a chance to wash out my brayer. And let's see what we have here. Yeah, I think the copper makes a big difference. Give, gives a, a little punch to this print. Okay, very cool. Let me show you a close up. Now, the darker color gives a little definition to the image. And it also ties in the collage underneath kind of integrates it to the image so it doesn't look like it was just pasted on but it's actually part of the part of the composition now here's a close up of the scribble textures And there's my lucky number. Okay, let me see if I can, if I can retrieve this, this is too good to waste. I'm going to do a mix of fluid matte medium and this unbleached titanium. I think if I use this straight out of the tube, this is going to dry very fast. So I have to uh, remedy that. Um, let me see. I think I'm running out of plastic tubs. I'm going to have to make do with this. So hopefully this will work. It's a mixture of matte medium and unbleached titanium. And what I'm hoping it will also pick up the faint traces of the uh, Sharpie pen.
Okay, I will leave this for another five minutes. Okay, it's been about five minutes. Let's see what we got. Hmm, the transfer is not so great. But nevertheless, it's interesting. I think this is starting to tear. Not good. Oh, I'm going to follow some advice given by some viewers to flip this over. I don't know if it's going to make any difference. But flipping something over this size is tricky. transfer is not so good but I think it worked by flipping it over, it does make it easier to get off the paper. It's really like holding a jellyfish. That's what it feels like. Okay. That's the result. When your jelly plate decides to f put up a fight, this is what happens. So I'm going to soak this in soapy water and give it another oil treatment. Now, um, I do like the texture of this. Here, let me show you a very close up. Really, it looks like a faded wall. And uh, there are some torn areas. So I'll have to put on my thinking cap and see how I can save this piece. Okay. More to come. Okay, everybody. I decided to make a lemonade out of my lemon. So I assembled some of my favorite spare parts, as I like to call them, and try to recover this disaster.
And sometimes when you have a disaster like this, it's really like a blessing in disguise. Okay. So I cut out some favorite shapes. Now when I look back at my work, a span of almost 40 years, I always come back to this circular shape or an oval. And I use it all the time. It has no special meaning, but I do like it as an element in my work. And it seems to show up almost all the time. Okay. This is kind of doctoring this bald corner here. doesn't have to be exact and that's the beauty of abstraction Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the last element, is this piece of lace. As you can see here, this is where this terrible tear happened. So I will put a patch on it. And since this is fabric, I'm really soaking it in the glue so it will mount itself. And I will apply some of the Mod Podge on the torn areas just to reinforce them. What happens to paper when it gets torn like this? Part of the sizing comes off because during the manufacturing process, some paper manufacturers put a sizing or it's like the substance that makes the paper very smooth. And um, what happened here is the top layer of the paper got torn off. So in a way it's uh, like the, a raw surface. 
and what I'm doing is applying this coat of glue to seal that raw area so it doesn't uh, deteriorate. So anyway, that was my quick fix. And actually, I do like this composition because of its raggedy look. Here is a close-up. It has a patina, like something that has been out in the weather. And I think when this dries and the, the shine of the glue disappears, it will look so much better. So let me wait for this to dry and I will recap with both pieces and compare them. So don't go away. Okay, everyone. Here we are at the last leg of this video. And this has dried nicely. And the even the little piece of lace fabric has mounted nicely to the paper. Here is a close-up so you can see the detail. And I like the contrast of the vermilion against the yellow and black. Here are the scribbles. Now, printing a layer of color on top of the collage gives this very rich, complex action going on. Okay, that is the first print. Now this is the second print, which is, I think, a successful save from what appeared to be a disaster. I actually like this better than the first one. So I applied my favorite elements with black tissue paper and here's that piece of lace fabric. And some more copy paper. And some of the warm-up exercises cut into strips. There you have it. I'm glad I was able to save this uh, piece and make it into something more interesting. Anyway, thank you for coming along for the ride. And thank you for all you wonderful viewers. Now that I actually have exceeded 4,000 subscribers for all the kind and generous people who have helped support my channel. Thank you. I hope to see you next time.